Today on our 2007 Jeep Liberty, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Roadmaster Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM-152. So here's everything our kit's going to come with. It's going to come with four high power diodes, three feet of wire loom, 30 feet of four wire wiring harness, several cable ties, a ring terminal, a buck connector, and a self-tapping screw. Now our kit is going to combine our lights from our RV with our towed vehicle and have them act as one. And when we're not towing our vehicle, the lights are going to act normal and not going to interfere with normal operation. Now our diodes here are going to prevent any feedback back to our RV and they're going to protect our vehicle and our lights and our wiring system from any damage that may occur. Now this kit is going to work with several adapter cords. We're going to be using it in conjunction with a 7 to 6 wire, part number 98146-7. Now that we've gone over some features, let's show you how we get installed. We're going to be installing some wiring and a supplemental braking system on here. So since the fascia is off, if you're going to be doing any wiring, now would be the time to do it. I already figured out Right about this general spot is where I'm going to mount my electrical connector. I'm going to be using one of these brackets here. This is a universal mounting bracket. You can pick one up on our website using part number 18140. I'm just going to take a couple self-tapping screws and I'm going to secure it to my frame right about here. Now we can take the supplied bracket for our electro connector. We're going to take the hardware from our universal mounting bracket. We're going to drop them down into place and we're going to follow it up with our lock nuts on the bottom. You want to make sure that the star shape is going towards the plate on your mounting and that the nut is on the bottom so you can grab it with a wrench if you need to tighten it up. Now I'm just going to get a Phillips head screwdriver and tighten everything up. Now I set my wire up here in the engine bay to start with and I ran it down below the headlight, came down, went underneath our grill support here and I came over right to our plug. Now I just took some electrical tape to help hide it when, it's, when I put the fascia back on it'll help hide it keeping it nice and black but at the same time it's going to help keep it protected against any heat sources you do want to make sure when you are routing your wire to stay away from any heat sources like the radiator or any coolers up here as well as any moving parts. So here's going to be the plug for our electrical connector. There's a dust cover on the back and we're going to go ahead and pull that off. We're actually going to slip it over our wire, pushing it back far enough so that we have enough room to work with. Now we're going to need to separate each one of these wires and strip the ends off so that we have enough room. Now when you're separating these wires, you can either use a pair of side cutters, a knife, or anything really to get these apart. Just want to mention you want to be extra careful not to cut the wire and damage any of the interior outside the insulation. We're going to go in between the wires, make a small cut, and we should be able to grab the end of it and pull them apart. We're just going to strip just a little bit of the insulation off of each one of our wires. Now if we come to the back of our plug here, we're going to loosen up the set screws. And each one of these posts are labeled. We're going to start with the one that's labeled GD, stands for ground. We're going to be taking our white wire and we're going to insert the copper end into here and tighten down our set screw. Now we're going to put our brown one into the labeled TM. We're going to take our green wire and that's going to go into the labeled RT. And finally we're going to take our yellow wire and put in the one labeled LT. Now with all the set screws tight, we can get ready to put our dust cap back in place. But before we do, I'm going to put a little bit of dielectric grease on all my connections back here. And if you don't have any, you can pick some up on our website using part number 11. 755. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of dielectric grease and fill this whole cavity up. Just around all my connections and wires. 
I'm also going to take a little bit of electrical tape. I'm going to wrap my dust cap all the way to the end. That way, I don't have to worry about any moisture or any dirt getting inside of our connection. Now we can take the supplied hardware in our kit, put one screw going through our hole here, and then on the back side, we have a lock nut. We can loosely put this in place while we get the other one ready. I'm going to tie it up using a Phillips head screwdriver and a 3 8 wrench to hold my lock nut. I went around my battery, then I came down over by my brake reservoir here and I went straight down following these brake lines. So this is where my wire dropped down from my engine bay. Put a piece of wire loom right here because I wanted to protect it against the exhaust. Ran it down my frame, securing it with a couple zip ties along the way. And then I went over my rear axle here, up over the EVAP canister, and then went right over the fuel tank and I dropped it down back here by my hitch. Now we're going to need to run our wire up to our taillights. Before we do that, we're going to need to gain access. So we're going to open up our back hatch and we're going to remove our taillights. Here on our passenger side, we're going to have two screws holding our taillight in. And I'm going to be using a T20 Torx bit to remove those. Now on the back of our taillight, we're going to have our connector here. And if we look down at the bottom, we're going to have a red tab. We're going to need to unlock that tab. If we take a screwdriver, just going to take that tab and push it this way. The tab unlocked, we can come to the small button right here. And we're going to push on that and it should release our socket from our taillight. And finally, we're going to pull this little clip out on our taillight housing so we can set our taillight aside. Here on our driver's side, our taillight's gonna be a little bit different. We're still gonna have the two screws holding it in place, but because of the way our hatch opens, we're gonna need it to come from the side. I'm still gonna be using the T20 Torx bit, but you might need an extension to gain access to our screws that are gonna be right here. We're going to do the same thing with our red locking tab. We're going to go ahead and split our wires. I'm going to take a pair of cutters and I'm going to cut right in between each wire. And you want to make sure you're being careful not to cut the wire itself. And then with those cut, we're going to go ahead and separate them and pull them by hand. And we're going to separate this all the way back to the vehicle. Now to make it easier for me to get my wires up to my housing to my taillights here, here on the driver's side, I'm going to take a piece of airline tube that I had laying around, I'm going to put it down through the bumper, and I'm going to go underneath and attach my wires to that. Now since we're working with the driver's side, we're going to take our yellow and brown wire and I'm going to attach them to the end of my airline tube that I fed down, and I'm going to pull those up. And we're going to pull this all the way through, getting as much of the excess wire that we can. Now we're going to come over to the passenger side and run our airline down to grab our remaining wires. Now I'm going to take my green wire, I'm going to put it into my airline tube, and I'm going to run it up to my taillight. Now the white wire that's left over, we're going to leave underneath the vehicle for right now, and we'll come back to that. Now in order to find out where we need to splice our wires in, we're going to be testing our factory plug. Now I have somebody in the vehicle right now with the lights off and we're going to need to check which pin and corresponding wire goes to our brake lights. So I'm going to use a tester here and I'm going to check each terminal to see which one is my brake signal. It's going to be this one on the top left which is going to be the white and tan or brown wire right here. Now we're going to need to write that down or remember that. Now we're going to come over to our passenger side and we're going to do the same test. So it's going to be the same terminal on the top left here. And if we look at the wire, 
it's still going to be our white and tan wire on the passenger side as well. Now our extra set of hands is going to turn off the brake signal. So they're going to take their foot off the brake and then I'm going to have them turn on the running lights so our tail lights come on. And we're going to need to test each one of our terminals to find our tail light signal which will be the top right terminal. And if we go to the back of our plug, it's gonna be this pink wire with the red stripe on it right here. Now we're gonna test the same thing on our passenger side to find our tail light signal. Again, it's gonna be the top right terminal. If we come to the back, it's gonna be this white wire with the red stripe. On our driver's side, we're gonna start out with our yellow wire, which is gonna be for our turn signal and brake. So if we come back to our factory plug here, we, if we remember and we wrote down, our factory brake wire, signal wire, is gonna be the white and brown. So we're gonna take any tape or any looming or anything else that's on here, you wanna take it off so you have a little bit of room and a little bit of wire to work with. And we're gonna cut this in half and strip back the ends. We're gonna take one of our diodes here and when we do, we wanna make sure that we get the ones that have all blue connectors on it. Now we're gonna take one of our connectors off and we're gonna take the wire we just stripped and we're gonna put it onto the end of our wire and we'll crimp it down. Always double check your connection. And we're gonna put another one of the connectors on the other end of the wire we just stripped as well. Now our terminal that's connected to the end of our plug here, that's going to be going into the outside on our diode. Now the other end that we cut and put our terminal on, it's going to go into either end of the end. It doesn't matter which one. Now that we have this connected, we're going to take our yellow wire, we're going to make an estimation about how much we need. So I'd say that right, right about here would be plenty of wire. So we're going to go ahead and cut that and we're going to strip the end off and finally we're going to put our other spade terminal from our diode on there and we'll crimp it down and we're going to plug that into the other end on our diode. Now we're going to focus on our tail light signal wire which is going to be the red and pink wire here. Now we're going to cut that wire in half and strip both ends. We're going to take one of our blue spade connectors and we're going to put it on one end of our wire and crimp it down. And on the other end, we're going to connect another one of our blue spade terminals from our diode. Now if we take the diode with the yellow spade connector on it, we're going to take our socket and with the spade connector that's going directly to our socket, it's going to go to the out terminal on our diode. We're going to take the other spade terminal with our red and pink wire, go to the end terminal. Now for our yellow connector here, again, we're going to estimate about how much wire we need for our brown wire. Right about here is a good amount. So we can cut this back and we're going to strip the end of that. Now the wire we just cut off, the brown wire, the excess wire that we have, we're going to be using this. So we're going to take the loose wire that we have and we're going to strip the end off of it here. Now we're going to take both of our brown wires, the one that's ran from our front that we pulled up and the loose wire that we just cut off. And we're going to connect both the wires together and we're going to crimp them down into our yellow connector. Now we can plug it into the inside of our diode. And we're going to take our loose brown wire and we're going to route it over to our passenger side tail light. So I routed my brown wire across my bumper and fish wired it up using my airline to get it out right here on my passenger side. Now in your application you may need a little bit more wire or you may need to extend your wire and if you do you can just use the yellow wire that we trimmed off from before. Our brown wire is going to be going to our tail light signal and if you remember or wrote it down on the passenger side it's going to be on that top socket with the red and white wire. So we're going to go ahead and cut this wire in half and strip both ends. So I'm going to take my diode and I'm going to take one of the spade terminals 
I'm going to crimp it on to each end of my wire. Now I can take my diode and the side with the factory socket on it is going to go into the out. And the other end of our red and white wire is going to go into one of the in terminals on our diode. Now we're going to take our brown wire and we're going to strip the end back and we're going to put this other spade terminal from our diode on there. Now we're going to take our brown wire and plug it into the other inside on our diode. Finally, we're going to be looking at our break and turn signal wire, which is going to be the white and tan wire on the right side. So again, we're going to cut this wire in half and strip back both ends. And we're going to take our spade terminals and put one on each end of our wire. Making sure that the wire with the socket on the end, that's going to be going into our outside on our diode. And then we're going to take the other end of our wire and put it on the inside on the diode. And then finally we're going to estimate about how much wire we need for our green wire. That should be plenty. We're going to cut this and strip back the insulation. And we can put our final spade connector on the end of our green wire and plug it to the other inside of our diode. Now it's a good idea before you start buttoning everything up and putting everything away, just putting a little bit of dielectric grease in all your connections. Now our diodes do come with a mounting sticker on the back. So before I get ready to mount them, I'm just going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and I'm going to clean this section of my taillight housing here. That way, when I take the backing off of my diode, it'll have something nice and clean to stick to. And I won't have to worry about all the dirt fighting it and falling off. So if we just take the protective backing off of our diodes, and just stick it to a flat surface. We're gonna wanna push fairly hard to make sure it makes good contact and it's not gonna fall off. And we can do that with the other remaining diodes that we have. If we come back underneath our vehicle, we're still going to have our loose white wire. We're going to need to ground this to the vehicle's chassis. So pretty much any point that you can find that's going to be a good ground, a nice solid metal surface, which I think I'll run my wire right behind my hitch mounting point, right at the rear axle on the left side here. So estimate, rough idea about how much wire I need. So I'm going to cut my excess wire off. Strip back the end, and I'm going to crimp on a ring terminal provided in our kit. And then finally, I'm going to take one of the provided self-tapping screws and screw it into the frame. Now, with all of our wires ran, before we put our tail lights in, I'm going to go ahead and tidy up all my wires down here and secure them and make sure I'm staying away from any heat sources. Are moving parts. With everything all buttoned up, we can begin plugging in our taillights and putting them back in place. Now we did find that we didn't have a whole lot of slack for our connector to reach our housing, so we have one diode mounted to our vehicle and the other one will be fine, but we didn't have enough slack to mount it as well. So we're going to plug our taillight back in. We're going to push that red locking tab back into place and finally replacing our hardware. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side as well. Now that everything's buttoned up, we're going to go ahead and test our lights. Now you can hook up to your RV or motorhome that you're going to be towing your Jeep with, but we're going to be using a tester to test our lights. So we can go ahead and check our tail lights. Those are both working. Now we can check our left turn signal. And finally our right turn signal. Now we know that all of our lights are working properly and we're ready to hook up to our RV. And that'll finish up our look at the Roadmaster Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM-152 on our 2007 Jeep Liberty.